So coming to the list of optimizations, right? I'm just basically going to go through a number of different uh, examples over here, right? The first and sort of most basic one is something called constant folding and constant propagation, okay? And the purpose of this is, you know, sometimes when you write code, you would actually have something which says, you know, inside a function, you might have a couple of lines of code like this, x is equal to 3 plus 5, y is equal to x plus 4, etc. right? So if you look at this code, the there are two ways that you can run this, right? The x is equal to 3 plus 5, when you generate the output code, the assembly language code, you could actually have code which basically says, load the value 3 into one register, load the value 5 into another register, and put in the operation, add r1 plus r2, and put the result in r1, okay? That is x is equal to 3 plus 5, okay? Another way of doing it would be to say, 3 plus 5, it's always a constant, right? It doesn't matter whether you do it at compilation time or at runtime. Why don't I just replace it with the value x is equal to 8, okay? So this x is equal to 3 plus 5 can be folded, meaning that this constant can be evaluated at compile time, right? Now, why is that a good thing? Because it means that at runtime, the assembly language instruction just reduces to one step load the value 8 into a register rather than having load 3 into a register, load 5 into a register and then add the two registers together, right? So that, that x is equal to 3 plus 5 can be reduced to just one instruction which basically says load the value 8 into a register, okay? But now you can go one step further and say, why don't I also propagate that value? I know at compile time that x has the value 8, okay? Based on that, what can I say about the value of y? This can also be evaluated at compile time. I do not need an instruction that actually does an addition at runtime in order to find that y is equal to 12, right? So I just replace this with y equal to 12, okay? Now, of course, why do I even need x and y? Presumably, x and y are being used somewhere else in the code further down, okay? If they are not, then there was no purpose to even doing this optimization. On the other hand, as far as the compiler is concerned, right, the thing that you need to keep in mind is the compiler is literally looking at the code one line at a time, okay? It is not sort of jumping ahead and saying, you know, uh, how do I optimize all of this at, uh, uh, how do I understand what the code is trying to do and do high level optimizations. Instead, it's looking one line at a time, in which case x is equal to 3 plus 5, you can easily replace y equal to x plus 4. Now that you know the value of x, you can put that value of x in, right? That's the constant propagation part. And once again, replace it with a constant at compile time, okay? What are the purpose of these optimizations? They are basically reducing the amount of code that you have in your system at the actual runtime. So it will usually result in a smaller code, right? Smaller program. Sir, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Sir, what is the difference between 3 plus 5 being done by com compiler and the actual hardware? I suppose uh, compiler will take more time than the hardware to compute 3 plus 5. Possibly, right? In fact, that's a good question because uh, it's a very important point that you need to understand, right? The assumption we are making is that all of these uh, kind of optimizations make sense when you need to compile once, but then you will run the program many times. Okay, so let's say that you are writing an operating system or for that matter, you are creating a browser, right? Or for, you know, something of that sort, right? Some kind of a program where your compilation process, you are willing to let it run for a long time. In fact, hardware is an extreme case of this, right? As far as hardware is concerned, you are going to compile once, then you are going to actually fabricate the chip or program the FPGA and that chip or FPGA will then run several times i mean either it will be either you will create several thousands of copies of that chip or at least the chip every time that it is switched on will operate will run the same way okay so the question that you asked is very relevant exactly in that context right you have to, these make sense only when compilation is done once 
and the run time the, the running of the program will happen you know hundreds or thousands of times okay i mean in this case these are simple enough optimizations that you know the compiler will also not take very long to do it right of course the compiler will take certain amount of time because if you think carefully about how this gets implemented inside the compiler right it has to first of all read each of those lines it has to parse them into the tokens it has to keep track of the fact that you know x is a token which ha has a variable value update that value 3 plus 5 over here in this case x was again being used in the very next line so i could replace that value optimize it further and so on but it's still it is a multi pass thing that is happening right so when you do this at compile time definitely it does take a certain it has an impact it takes a certain amount of time but the payoff is huge right and what i mean by payoff is this is now going to be used hopefully thousands of times in practice okay this okay. applies to most of the optimizations that i'm going to be talking about right most of them make sense in this context that you are doing compilation once followed by running many times right and of course in the context of hardware that is by definition true right i i compile once i am almost no not almost i am never going to build just one chip and run it one time the next step that we can go a bit further with this right is something called common sub expressions okay now the line of code that i have written over here is something which you know if uh, any of you are writing a code corresponding to let's say a communication system this is entirely possible right i mean this is pretty much how you would uh, do the iq modulation right so xi over here would correspond to some set of values which are basically the i component of uh, some uh, uh, signal right the real valued component of a signal and xq would probably be something like the uh, uh, imaginary component right what you are actually trying to do is some uh, z e power uh, omega uh, t okay that's basically what you are trying to emulate by means of a uh, equivalent digital signal which means it has been converted into discrete time right so that's why i have these samples in i but ultimately if you look at it what you find is that you know there is this thing out here 2 into pi into fc right so the first thing that you can notice over here is 2 into pi is definitely a constant okay so at compile time i can certainly replace 2 into pi with one value okay now the thing is what else can i do over here this fc is usually some kind of a carrier frequency right which might be something which is obtained only at run time right or rather is something that you want to program at run time right maybe you want to do some kind of a modulation so you actually want to change the center frequency of the modulation which means that the compiler cannot do anything about it Okay, so the two into pi could be replaced with one constant, but the into fc cannot be replaced with a constant. But if you look at it, you find that the two into pi into fc is used multiple times. Right? In fact, what you'll find is this entire two into pi into fc into i. Right? This entire thing over here is used twice. Right? Within the same expression. So what I can do is basically call this entire thing as a sub-expression. Why do I call it a sub-expression? Because obviously this you know what i have over here is this entire y of i is one mathematical expression within that there are certain sub parts which it turns out are actually computed twice okay now how would i do this i could probably more effectively rewrite this as inside this for loop right i would introduce one new variable let's say t is equal to 2 into pi into fc into i right i can do this entire computation once and then i can basically say y of i equals xi of i into cos of t plus xq of i into sin of t okay so because i computed t once i am able to reuse it in two places okay so this is essentially what we call the common sub expression common in the sense that not that it is something which happens often right more that it is common to multiple uh, sub expressions within the computation 
okay so i consider this 2 into pi into fc into i as the common sub expression i evaluate it once and use it in multiple places okay now you can probably think about it right i mean this kind of common sub expression is easy to understand it basically says that you know i have one small mathematical computation over here i can find one sub, sub expression by the way the one thing you will notice is that you know almost all the examples that i am giving are doing some kind of arithmetic computation mathematical computation right but there are a few of the optimizations that we will see later which are actually more related to memory access right how do i what do i need to read or write from memory and how do i sort of optimize that okay but there could also be situations where you are just trying to do some kind of bit manipulation or some other uh, you know modifications of data right which ultimately also the same kind of ideas apply right if there is some manipulation of data which is being done such that there is one common part which you can optimize it would still fall under the same thing right common sub expressions now this common sub expression elimination can also be done at sort of two levels of the program right one is where you essentially operate within a single block of code right so this whatever is within these curly brackets is what i would consider one block of code okay so then i can just basically go into that block look at what are all the opt, uh, you know the computations that are being done over there i know that there are not going to be any dramatic changes that happen because of you know some other part of the code getting run and so on i can find common sub expressions and optimize them in this way right this can also be done at a sort of global level and what i mean by global level is that you actually do it such that large parts of the program itself you need to now keep track of multiple functions within the program right and say okay is there something which is common between two or three different functions across the entire scope of the program right that is clearly harder to do right if you are able to do it then the payoff could potentially be higher right but it requires a sort of global view of the program as well right it's not something that you can easily do by just looking at one function at a time okay so yeah i mean you know the block level ones are easy to identify and they have a block level impact now even though i'm saying block level impact as though you know that's like a minor thing what you will realize over here is this actually has a big impact because it's being run a thousand times right that that loop is running a thousand times so by reducing this by taking out this common sub expression i have essentially taken out three multiplications into 1000 times so 3000 multiplications have been reduced okay of course sir, one question yeah go ahead question uh, sir in this case uh, we'll probably be defining pi as a constant like pi equal to 3.14 and fc might be 1 gigahertz or something correct so how will the compiler know uh, not to consider fc and to consider pi because fc will be i mean that will just be based on the data type right so if i have defined uh, pi yeah so uh, by the way that's another thing right see it depends on how you have defined pi supposing i declare pi as let's say you know i say that this is some double pi and double fc okay the compiler the first thing that it can do is basically scan through the entire program and find out when are the values of pi and fc changing right and if it finds that pi and fc are never going to change it can basically replace them with constants uh, through, throughout and then optimize okay on the other hand if it finds that let's say fc is something which needs to come from a parameter file or uh, from uh, uh, the input of the program or from somewhere else then there is no way that it can replace it with a constant but pi on the other hand will be declared somewhere either in a header file or in the main code and it will have something which says that you know this is not going to change right so compilers usually like i said they work in multiple passes right so the first pass would basically be able to pick up what are the values that a given variable can take based on which it can identify whether this is going to be a constant or not right in fact one of the things that might happen is you might have found that and uh, you might have a situation where just before this for loop you actually have a statement which says fc is equal to 1000 okay which means that as far as the compiler is concerned whenever this for loop runs fc will have the value 1000 there is nothing else that can be there 
which means that even though you might have a situation where fc could be given some other values in some other part of the code right as far as this particular function is concerned fc will always have the value 1000 it will be treated as a constant and optimized okay now potentially there are you know like uh, very uh, crazy situations that can happen let's say that you declared fc as a global variable right and i have this thing saying that fc is equal to 1000 somewhere out here right potentially because fc was a global variable there is a chance that somewhere between that uh, instruction fc is equal to 1000 and the start of the for loop right some interrupt or something happens or maybe this is a multi threaded program we switch over into something else the value of fc gets updated and the value that is actually used inside the for loop is actually not equal to 1000 okay, such things can happen and that is why people say that you know multi threaded programs uh, and things of that sort are difficult to write and difficult to optimize okay because if i have such a situation i can potentially find that between the assignment fc is equal to 1000 and the start of the for loop the value of fc can change even though there is nothing in my code to indicate that it can okay usually if such a thing happens it is indicative of a problem with the code you should never have a situation where the code can allow something of that sort but you know it's just something to be aware of okay right so like i said you know the block level uh, sorry uh, is that any further question yes sir if we use 2 into pi i pi outside this for loop then that's what you are calling as global sub expression no 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 i i'll get to that you know moving it outside the for loop i'll get to that in a moment but what i'm saying is 2 into pi if i just let's say that i declare some other thing and say that you know uh, whatever p is equal to 2 into pi out here right this i know is a constant p is equal to 2 into pi is guaranteed to be a constant because pi is a constant okay so uh, i mean i would not normally do something like this what i would do is the compiler itself would replace that 2 into pi with its equivalent value so i would basically replace this with something like you know 6.28 something into fc into y that is what i mean by uh, the sorry the, that is the constant folding part of it right but a global uh, common sub expression elimination is something else what it's saying is maybe i'm using this 2 into pi into fc over here i'm also using it somewhere else in some other part of the function right or the 2 into pi itself is used as something which is uh, is one common expression which occurs in multiple places okay uh, moving it outside the for loop is a is it's usually not considered as a sub expression elimination that is a slightly different term that we use for that we'll get to that in a moment sir, sir one more question out of the context sure Sir, we, we don't have a floating point uh, unit, hardware yeah, yeah. unit, which can compute cost uh, very accurately. Okay. Or sign function. So, compiler will decide whether to push this cost uh, function to uh, a, a hardware unit or to do it itself. Ah, that is an uh, uh, interesting question. Almost certainly never. Okay. Very few compilers will do things of that sort because that is a fairly significant change in the way that you are even doing the computation okay so usually what happens is when i write something like this cos of t what i am actually writing in my c code is just call this function okay and that function where is it available in the math library okay so i'll have to link the math library into the code and uh, you know it will just call the appropriate function that's all so the compiler is just looking at it that way right now in certain cases there might be a situation where there are multiple different ways of implementing the same function okay so cos of t there might be like one way which is done purely in software versus one way which can be done in hardware very few compilers will be there which basically take that kind of a call i mean see uh, forget even hardware right there might be multiple ways of implementing cos in software itself one of them might be a taylor series expansion one of them might be a lookup table plus interpolation one of them might be, uh, you know, some other uh, way of uh, doing the computation, right? So, in principle, it is possible that for the same uh, function, there are multiple different implementations. Each one of them has a different cost, right? Even if it is purely software, 
each one might occupy a different amount of memory and each one might take a different number of clock cycles to finish right there are and there can be certain situations in which compilers might try to take a call between those right decide which one of them should actually be used to implement the given function okay but that is not a common thing to do usually when you write cos of t that is one thing which you know you are calling a function that's it you use that function whichever one is there most of the time that is what is done okay now what you said can it actually uh, sort of consider between a software function versus a hardware function that comes into the realm of actually you know high level synthesis and optimization because over there normal regular compilers will very rarely decide on something like that but in principle a compiler could even decide to do something of that sort right it might take a decision where it says okay i have these different uh, implementations and i will have to choose one of them there so you know that information that the different implementations are completely equivalent and you can choose one of these has to be provided to the compiler somehow okay these are alternate implementations for the same function in which case the compiler will be able to take some cost associated with the function and say okay which one should it actually apply okay okay sir yeah so like i said you know moving forward uh, block level easy to identify it they'll have block level impact global could potentially have larger impact because they can affect like multiple functions multiple code blocks right but they are usually harder to identify and implement but still it's possible right now the interesting thing is this sort of brings up a concept called dead code elimination right and dead code is essentially defined as something which will never be executed okay so if you look through this code right this function int f of uh, int f with all of these uh, statements written over here right let's straight away jump ahead and look at this last statement return j right and the question i'm asking is can this ever get executed okay and at least as long as i'm working with regular c semantics the answer is no i can never hit this because the previous return i was not based on a if statement there was no condition over there it just says return i okay which means that in practice when i am running through this function i will never actually hit return j okay so this is a dead line of code right can th this can never be called basically right which means that i can go one step further back and say what about the j equal to 2 this was also a dead line of code right for the same reason because i assign j equal to 2 and return j but if i am never going to return j then why should i bother to do the assignment even right because usually assignment means loading a value into a register okay let's look further over there right i have for example this uh, i equal to 1 but if i look further down i find that over here i am doing i equal to 3 and i never use i equal to 1 anywhere in between therefore i can say that this i equal to 1 is also dead code okay anything further that you can look at right the j equal to 2 is it ever getting used inside this function at least no because i have this j equal to 2 which is promptly overwritten by j equal to i plus 4 but even the j equal to i plus 4 is actually irrelevant right none of these lines actually affect the output that is generated right in fact this entire function could probably have just been translated into just int f what would it be it would just say return 3 okay i don't need to declare i i don't need to declare j i don't need to do anything else i can just say return 3 and be done okay now obviously the question that would come up is why would i ever write code like this and of course the answer is you would never write code like this right hopefully not at least right but then why should we even think about something of this sort think about the kinds of optimizations that we were talking about earlier right some kinds of constant propagations some kind of uh, other uh, sub expression eliminations as a result of doing some of those optimizations you might 
find a situation where some of your subsequent lines of code become redundant. Okay. So dead code is usually something that a compiler finds as a result of some other optimizations that it has done. Right. And by eliminating all the dead code, you not only bring down the size of the code, you potentially also have this thing that you know you could reduce uh, the and you you almost certainly will also reduce the number of cycles that it takes to execute. Right? Because you are not doing anything redundant or irrelevant. Okay. 